Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about something completely different from what I usually talk about. Um, if you notice, I've changed the name of my page from Kudi Tree to my name, which is Queen Adit Two. And um, I so said I wanted to share something that is very dear and near to my heart, and it's my conversion story. And I'm always so happy to share with people whoever is willing to listen. So I'm going to share how I became a Christian with y'all. Okay. okay, so let me start from the very beginning. I was actually raised in a white garment church and um, in my opinion, it's actually the worst of them all. <laughs> if you know anything about them, um, it's called the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. I actually used to be very, very embarrassed to tell people this. Most of the people that I went to secondary school with, even university, never even knew the church I used to attend when I was back at home. So I used to hide, I used to lie, I used to... Because I was just so embarrassed. So this is, this is actually one of the first times I'm coming out to like the whole world like some of my friends now know obviously i'm not a child anymore so i i tell those that i want to tell okay so now their core belief system is that their um leader or the founder of the church is jesus christ who has returned so that's basically the <laughs> the main gist of it so they're all basically worship him as christ and um yeah so that that growing up that was all i knew that the that, that's christianity as you know it was taught to me so um i actually remember back then being very very passionate about the church i am i would like to say i'm a very passionate person so of all my siblings even my mom used to say that i used to be like the most passionate because i'll be like wow you know i was really passionate about it but even during that time of being so passionate as a child i also had some questions because some things you were not just adding up and you know even hearing things that people say about the church you know that, that's the reason why i was so embarrassed by it because i hear what people say about it that oh this drink blood the old the leader is half crayfish all those they're all lies obviously i knew they were lies clearly because i attended the church so i knew that all those things were just you know fabrications and lies but the other things regarding um his claim to being christ and all that something just were not adding up regarding that so i used to try and make some research my little child like you know i just used to try and read my bible and try to make sense of what you know and the, the, the worst part of it is that my research was based on the bible verses that they um, used to defend their claim so i'll go to those verses and try to read it i'm like this doesn't really say what they say it says it in my mind it's saying something else this is, it doesn't defend but i was just so confused and um i remember praying um one particular time when i was really i think i was like 12 or 13 and i would just pray that I just want to know who the true God is and that was just my desire and I prayed that that I just don't want to be confused I don't want to do the wrong thing I want to know who the true God is and I still continue going to the church and that was what I knew until um I actually went to a Catholic school and I would say throughout my whole time there I never even knew the gospel never I don't think I heard the gospel <sighs> I mean if you know anything about the Catholic church you know that it's it's more of traditions do this do that go to confession do this do that do that so you know the gospel was never really a thing so fast forward to university this is where i actually got saved so i went to university in malaysia which i would say is a blessing because it gave me an opportunity to be away <laughs> from um the system here <laughs> i'll put it like that and um even though i was attending i think yeah the Pentecostal, what is it? What I call it? I'll call it the Prosperity Church because that's what it is. A Prosperity Church. I was attending that for the first one, two years of my stay there, and this actually used to make me very, very angry because um, all my time going to that church, I was an unbeliever, a stuck unbeliever. Me and my friend, we actually used to attend the church just because we wanted to, you know, show off our outfits. That we were so vain. By the way, we thought we were the hottest things since a uh, fried rice or something and we just thought we were so hot so we were, <laughs> every sunday what we would be so concerned about was the outfit that we were going to wear if we didn't have anything new and hot to wear we would not go to church and then when we get to church this is just a side gist we will not make sure we walk up and down to make sure everyone has seen our outfit then we we'll go and sit down sometimes we won't go outside and go and eat rice during the same because we we weren't believers we just we didn't care really i think i would say for myself i didn't really care about what and the honest truth he, the pastor himself was not really saying anything important so the church was basically preaching mostly how to make money i remember one particular sermon that was centered on bill gates and his life and how he made his money I remember when <laughs> michael jackson died 
yeah, I'm dating myself a little bit. When Michael Jackson died, he made a sermon on Michael Jackson's life and how successful he was. He, 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 how he, he made his success and became the world famous. And then lots of the songs that were sang in church that day were Michael Jackson's hit songs. I kid you not. I, I wish I was making this thing up. Literally, that was most of what the sermons were. were mostly about, you know... There were so many heretical things that guy said in that church. I do not just, quite frankly, want to remember them. So I attended that church for a while until <laughs> um my friend and i uh, this same friend that we actually used to go to this church together most of the time because we had other friends that we were quite close but this particular one we both used to go to the church more than the rest because we we're like please we might be you know children of the world but we have to go to church because you have to go to church okay so yeah so this particular friend of mine um there was a day i can remember very clearly like it's so clear in my mind she it was in the evening and she came to me and she was telling me that she had a dream and she was so shaken by it okay, so she was basically shaken by the whole dream and then she told me that in this dream she dreamt that it was judgment day it was one of those judgment day dreams so i need to stop doing this <laughs> so it was one of those judgment day dreams and she said myself her and some of our other friends because we were like five friends that were really close so the rest of us were all were all in a line being judged the last day and she was just trying to narrate how scared and everybody on the line was and me in my self-righteousness I, I think i'll give a bit of background about who i really was by the time i explain why i reacted like this in my self-righteousness in my mind i was like please i know me i'm already in heaven because ugh, i'm not like this my other friends they are children of the world me i go to church i do all the, you know i don't do the bad things my friends because i was one of those girls that would you know I hung around those girls. We were friends, but I won't call that thing real friendship, to be honest, because there were a lot of jealousy and, you know, girls' issues going on behind there. And I just used to go out with them because I would be judging them in my head, like, these girls are bad girls. I don't do this. But I was there. I followed them around, but I don't. So it just did not make sense. It was just hypocrisy and self righteousness. I just felt like I was the most righteous thing ever. So in my head, I was like, please, me, I know I'm in heaven. Please, stop it. I know this one's not here. Did they go? So I now see someone told me, Queen, ask her, like, where are you in this dream? Like, where were you? So I asked her, okay, in this dream, where was I? She's like, oh, you were already in hell. And I was like, what? 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 <laughs> it was like, it was like someone put the break in, my, like, they just break, like, it was as if everything stopped. Like, I could hear and some I could not believe it. I was in shock. I just it, I was so self-righteous that I never ever assumed or imagined that I would go to hell in another person's dream. I just I'm assumed that wherever the scenario, whatever scenario, I am a good girl. So I'm going to heaven. Okay. So I just could not understand it. I could not imagine it. So I was so visibly I think I was even more shaken than she was because it rocked my world. I never considered it. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do now? I have to clean myself up. I have to stop doing all the bad things I used to do. I, I was in this mode for about six months. And those six months were horrible. Because it was like the Holy Spirit was now shining light on who I truly was. Truly showing me who I really was. And I could see all my sin. The more I tried to stop doing those bad things, the more I saw more and more and more. And, more. and I was like, oh my God. I can never, ever, ever be perfect. How am I going to do this now? So if I die like this, is there for you? Hey, go. I'll do this. So I was depressed. I could not talk. I could not even explain what was even doing me to anybody because it doesn't even make any sense. I could not explain what was doing me. So that was just like a miserable couple of months for me. So how did God turn this around? <laughs> Clearly, I didn't understand the gospel. I didn't know what the gospel was. I didn't know what Christ came to do per se. I mean, I've heard Jesus died for our sins, but it just did not make any sense to me. Or it was never really explained because I never really attended any real church before. And um, I remember going through YouTube. I don't even know why they recommended that video to me because I never used to watch any church-related thing on YouTube. And I saw a video. It was like a poetry thing. It was about, you know, the true Christ versus the false Christ. I was like, what does that mean? Is there a false Christ? That doesn't make any sense. But I was like, okay, I'm going to watch it. So I clicked on it. And it was like a poetry thing where the lady was talking about how the world has been sold 
a false idol, like an idol. And the Christ that we are worshipping is the wrong Christ. The Christ that you know encourages you to sin. The Christ that encourages you to live the way you want to live. The Christ that um, encourages you to chase after money, to chase after the things of the world, and just to live worldly lives. And then this, and then as opposed to what the true Christ wants from for us, and wants to save us from our sin, wants to deliver us from our sin. Who shed his blood on the cross for our sins and then kind of just, everything just it was like the light bulb came up my head i was like oh my god this is what i've been looking for like obviously i can't help myself and from there i kept on watching more and more videos in the reformed circle <laughs> and um just trying to make sense understand what is wrong and how you know i can get saved basically so it was from there i realized that okay i'm missing that i can't help myself I can't save myself. I can't be good enough for um, to get myself the ticket to heaven. Obviously, I can't. So it was at that point I realized, and you know, she told me that you can't actually do this. This is what Christ came to do. He came to die for our sins and to deliver us from the power of death and the power of hell and everything like that. So at that point, I believe my first step to salvation became, and then the more I learned, obviously, I repented of my sin and I got saved. So, <laughs> for me, it's 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 just a testament to God's um, God's kindness. And for me, I I, I think that people who are self righteous are actually one of the most hardest people to read because I see them everywhere um, in Nigeria because we have a culture of we have a Christian culture where everybody is going to church. The church is always packed full. People are always saying all kinds of Nigeria of uh, Christian slang. Uh, what's the new one now? What God cannot do does not exist. It's like, it just doesn't make, but everyone is saying it. Everyone is feeling very religious. Everyone feels, you know, like, uh, so it's it's really, really hard to reach people like that because I was one of those people and I knew you couldn't tell me nothing, okay? I knew I was the most perfect person around because I didn't understand what the gospel was. I didn't know who I was as a, as a sinner. I didn't think I was a sinner, really. I didn't think so. And I didn't even know what the point of what Christ came to do. I didn't understand the gospel basically. And I'm thankful for churches like the one I attend and how they keep on preaching the gospel every Sunday. Every not just for unbelievers, it's for us as believers to be reminded of the work of Christ on the cross, which is the this key is paramount. We need to be reminded every single day. We need to be, you know, re evangelized every single day that, you know, we should constantly keep on turning away from ourselves, turning away from our sins, turning away from and turning to Christ. So, this is a very. I've been a Christian for hmm, about 12 years now. So, that was like about 12, 12 years ago. And it, it's been amazing. It's been painful. <laughs> it's been a lot of things. It's been lonely. It's been joyous. It's been full of fellowship with amazing believers I've met along the way. And I mean, I kind of, I'm just thinking of all of them, all the people that God has sent my way all these years. And it's so beautiful. And you lose a lot of friends. I lost a lot of friends as a result of my conversion. And, you know, I lost relationship with family members who are still in the, the white coming church. I lost a lot. <laughs> the Christian walk is a walk of loss and gain, right? You lose the world, you lose some things that are dear to you, but you gain something that is eternal and can never be lost. So, like, um, I remember the sermon that was preached a few Sundays ago. This missionary who also became a master later on in life, Jim, I think Jim Elliot, yes, he's basically saying, I'm just paraphrasing this, I'm trying to remember exactly what for what. He's basically saying that. He's no fool who, you know, gives, lets go of things that he will lose to gain things that he can never lose. Like the things that we have in this world, family, friends, you know, money, cars, opportunities and whatnot. We can lose them. We will lose them. Nobody's taking any of these things back when we die. But when the things that we can gain, even here in this world, that can never be lost is our salvation. It's Christ himself. So, he's no fool who gives that exchange. Let's go of the things of the world. Let's go of um, all the things that we think are so important to gain something that is eternally important, that's internally valuable, that can never be lost. So, <laughs> so that's basically my um, conversion story. And I would love to hear um, any other person's own who would like to share below. Um, yeah, so basically I just want to share this to share who I am because I believe this is the core of who I am. I hope you enjoyed that. And please share this with anybody you want to encourage.
and um, anything just share it and leave a comment down below